Let's go on to there at the Bears' first open OTA. You got a glimpse of Caleb Williams, who apparently did throw an incompletion for the record. The offense did struggle based on accounts. The red zone offense did fizzle, apparently. Why is everybody so concerned when you look at the calendar? I don't see the Titans coming up Sunday. It still is May. Because uh, it's May. What else are we going to talk about, right? We've spent three, four months talking about Caleb Williams and everything that he can and probably will bring to this franchise. And it's his first practice in shorts against an NFL defense. And he looked exactly like a rookie should look. He uh, looked like he struggled with the speed of the game, with the tight windows. He's still learning the playbook. He's still getting used to all of his new receivers. No Keenan Allen, no Roma Dunze. Two-fifths of the offensive line were not there. Everything was as expected. You don't expect Caleb Williams to parachute in and go 19 for 20 on day one. And for me, <clears throat> hey, y'all know, man, <clears throat> I'm a big Caleb supporter, but he wasn't my number one quarterback. And even if he was my number one quarterback, I wouldn't expect him to light up OTAs, these mini camps early, because it's a new level. It's, it's, it's levels to this, man. <laughs> you go from playing Colorado to playing freaking the San Francisco 49ers, man. It's like the Vikings, the Lions. You know, you go to, you're playing NFL level players. You playing against guys that are making millions of dollars. They got families to feed, and this is all they do every day. They ain't got class. They ain't got nothing else to do but uh, whoop up on you. So if you think any of these rookies is going to come in and light up right away, you kind of being disingenuous. It's going to take about a couple months for them to acclimate, and then you'll kind of see if you maybe have something a year, two, three years down the, down the line. So I personally think he's going to be a really good fit. Uh, for Chicago, I mean, they put everything around him to be successful, but there is going to be a learning curve that he is going to have to overcome. Do you think it's a product of just the expectations being enormous and maybe outsized and the fact that, you know what, we forget sometimes in that, in that rush to anoint him that he is going to have days like he did on Thursday? Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with that. It has to do with being in the Chicago bubble for three months. There was a big argument about what should they do, right? Should they keep Justin Fields? Should they draft Caleb Williams? Should they draft him? And all the talk is, well, he could be potentially generational. Maybe he's the next Andrew Luck. He's kind of Aaron Rodgers. And you expect that to just materialize automatically. And the truth is, if he is a Super Bowl winning quarterback, it's going to take a lot of time. And the Bears defensive veterans probably relish the fact that facing the kid who they had heard so much about, Kevin Byard talked about that reality and just what maybe Caleb Williams could take away from the experience. You guys as a defense, how do you view your responsibility of preparing Caleb for the regular season? Uh, making as hard on him as possible. Um, you know, going out there, showing some swag, uh, talking trash, doing all that stuff, because at the end of the day, um, He's gonna he's gonna have to lead us there, and I mean that's that's kind of how it's gonna be. And um, I said something to him at the end of the practice, like hey, keep it going, we're gonna keep making you better. And you know, not necessarily saying that you just had a terrible day, but it's like days like this are gonna make you better. So um, you know, that's our job. And I like I said, I mean honestly, just the first three days, obviously we had three practices. Uh, he's done a lot of positive things. Um, you know, he's made some really great throws and uh, just coming in with that swag as a, you know, obviously as a rookie quarterback, but he doesn't seem flustered by anything. So uh, that's exciting to see. I think for me, and the only reason I went and researched this video was because on Twitter, uh, I saw that people say he threw, or maybe it was Facebook, people say he threw seven consecutive interceptions and they pulled him off the field. I said, dang, that's bad, but I mean, he's still a rookie. You know what I'm saying? Everybody going to throw the Peyton Manning mantra out there. Peyton Manning threw 30 interceptions in rookie year, and look what he turned out to be. So, um, But he didn't throw 30 interceptions in OTAs, but... Um, for me, one is interesting that Jalen Johnson is not the one that's addressing the media and that Kevin Byers is one that came from Tennessee uh, is the one that's addressing the media. It's, and I think a lot of people are discounting the additions the Bears have made on both offense and defense. I'm not a super – I don't follow the Bears like that. I'm a Steelers fan, but I don't follow the Bears like that. But maybe this is an testament to how good the Bears defense is or will be. You know, only time will tell. So we, I don't know if we can put it solely – on Caleb because you got to realize they already got Jalen Johnson, they got Bayard. I don't know who the other corners are, but they have those two alone is a formidable secondary. So he's not going against slouches. Then he didn't have his starting receivers out there. Not all of them, not full strength. So, you know, there's a lot of things going on that, you know, could have aided in those interceptions and could have been pressures, could have been, you know, people running the wrong routes. It could have been a lot of different things. So, I don't, you know, and I, and I like to light people up too and best believe you me. Once we get to about week four, five, six, 
And if Caleb Williams is still kind of like struggling a little bit, hey, bro, I'm on your head. I'm on your head. I got to. Got to. I'm still going to hold his judgment until about that second, third year. Then you got to give him time to develop. But, you know, we should, we should see glimpses. I believe everything he said. We'll get back to Caleb Williams. But, Josh, Kevin Byard's been here five minutes. It strikes me as yeah. very impressive yeah. that he's able to be the spokesman for the defense and talk with as much conviction as he spoke. Yeah, he's, what he said was, uh, I'm a veteran's veteran, right? I can come in and know my role automatically and feel it out, and he's not lost, right? He's already talking about how he's going to pair with Jaquan Brisker, how they're going to mix things up than they did last year, right, and being multiple instead of one back, one in the box. Uh, he's already kind of taken a leadership role in this defense, which I think a young unit really does need with Eddie Jackson gone. Flucy talked about Javon Dexter as being the guy that... Oh, they lost Eddie Jackson? Pressed him with his body type and yeah. the way that he changed his body in the offseason, however short it was. Mm -hmm. Isn't he the key guy? Isn't he the most unknown aspect of this defense? Jervon Dexter, how he manages that three technique position? Because you look around the other spots, they've been filled by veterans like Bayer. They've been, you know, supplemented by the draft. I think mm -hmm. when you look at the one area, Jervon Dexter is the guy, and I thought it was interesting that Matt Eberflus mentioned that. Yeah, there's no question. I asked Eric Washington about what he's kind of learned about Jervon Dexter since they've got him on turf, and he said he's just got a chip on his shoulder. Like, he's a guy who believes he can make an impact, and it's a guy who the first 12 weeks last year before Montez Sweat arrived was pretty much a zero, David. And then Montez Sweat arrives, four sacks, 19 pressures. That's pretty good. If Jervon Dexter can take another leap and help Montez Sweat out with the pass rush, I think this defense can be – Pretty elite, but it's it's all kind of riding on him. Do you believe the edge rusher opposite Montez Sweat, who wasn't there on Thursday and was missed an OTA, they are voluntary, mm -hmm. but do you think the edge rusher opposite Montez Sweat is on the roster yet? Yeah, I think it, it probably is. I mean, maybe they go out and get Yannick Ngakwe. I know there's probably some mutual interest depending on how the ankle heals, but they have Demarcus Walker. They're very high on Austin Booker. I thought Jacob Martin had some nice moments yesterday. He had a 14% pass rush win rate last year for the Colts. That's pretty good. So you can kind of piece it together. It's not the long-term answer, but in terms of this year, uh, it's, it's probably a good chance it's on the roster. Let's face it, the biggest question revolves around how everybody acts around Caleb Williams and how they assimilate uh, to having him being the number one quarterback. Matt Eberflus, who answered questions about uh, his rookie quarterback, sounded like this when he talked about Caleb Williams taking over his offense. It's really just about when he, um, you know, can rip the call, you know, get the call in and out of the huddle, breaking the huddle, um, having that pace that we need to have. And we've been doing, uh, of course, the walkthroughs, and, and he's been really good with that. And this is a, the first time going against, you know, uh, a, a pro defense, you know, and, and a pretty good one. So it's going to be um, a, a learning uh, for everybody. And uh, they're, they're getting everything together, and uh, it's, it was progress. I saw progress from the first day to the second, second to the third. So it's been good. But you see a, a difference in difficulty for him, for Caleb, going up against, as you said, a pro defense. I guess it's, it's yeah, there's – well, I see progress. I, I see progress for sure. And uh, you know, that's going to continue to be that way. Um, he's been in early, you know, go, stays late, you know, asking questions at night. He's got his iPad at night, you know, in the hotel and been working, working his tail off. When you say you see progress, in, in what regard? Um, just – Understanding the offense, understanding the concepts, understanding, you know, uh, coverages, understanding where to go with the ball. He's been he's been great that way. And we're not holding back. We're giving him a lot of information. You know, uh, we're giving him the offense and we want to be able to go through the whole offense before the offseason gets done. And uh, primarily most of it. And then uh, working into the summer, we'll have a plan for him there and then work him in training camp and then go from there. See, now it's starting to make a little bit more sense for me. They're feeding him the entire playbook, uh, and they're just seeing what happens, and then they're going to go back and make the correction. So, you know, a lot of people will spoon feed, you know, get, get, build your rookie some confidence, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to giving him the whole playbook, and then we can always go back and make the corrections. You know, we can, go, we can always go back and fix it, uh, but we got to get you that exposure, especially as a special education teacher. Hey, it's all about getting kids, at least exposing them to the grade-level curriculum and then peeling back the layers after the fact. So you just have to expose them to that 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 grade level, that league level uh, curriculum so that then you can know where you need to go in and modify and make adjustments and make accommodations to fit your quarterback. So I, I kind of like it. He going to struggle. He going to struggle, but that's, any rookie going to struggle, especially you going to give him the whole give him the show, whole shebang bang and not just the tip. Pause. Oh, wait a minute. What? <laughs> 
Let's face it, nothing matters until the games count. But Josh Schrock, what's your biggest concern, if you have one, about Caleb Williams taking over this offense, being given the entirety of the playbook from day one? No, I like that they're giving him the entire playbook from day one because yeah. I think by the time they get to the break, they have to know what works what he's comfortable with and what they have to change. I think if I were to have a quote-unquote concern, it'd be minimal, but it's how does he progress in digesting the play call, ripping it, and getting everyone lined up. I think yesterday we saw a lot of times they would break the huddle, they get to the line, and then someone's in the wrong spot, and they have to go back and re-talk through the call and get back to the line. So I think coming from college where you look to the sideline and get the play and it's just, okay, go, I think it's a learning process, and they have to figure out how they can tailor it and streamline it so he gets comfortable with that. I like that he struggled. I like that not everything came as easily as it seemed to have come to him to this point. Uh, maybe had something to do with him going to the White Sox game. I don't know. There seems to be bad things that happen when you go to the <laughs> south side yes. and guaranteed rate field. But do you think that he's the kind of guy who needed this? Do you think that he's the kind of guy that will Ooh, uh, respond to? He hasn't struggled a lot in his, in his football career. Right. But so a little bit, I think, would be beneficial but how do you see it? No, I think I think he'll take it well. I think what we learned about him last year during what he called a really trying season going 7-5 and five is he kind of learned how to deal with, with bumps and bruises. And what Kevin Byard said after he told Caleb to practice, this is going to make you better, he said Caleb responded with, yeah, I know, and I'll get better. And what DJ Morris said is, hey, every day he comes back, he takes the mistake, he learns from it, and he does it right. So I think this is a guy who is really confident and can take can take the hits, David. He learns well, and he doesn't take it as a bruised ego. He knows this is all part of the plan. Matt Eber- yeah, I, I like that question, man. Do you, do you think this is a guy that needed that this struggle? And I do because from the outside looking in, I don't know Caleb Williams person. Most of the people who comment or hate, I don't hate him. I, I actually love Caleb Williams. He's my, my top two, three quarterbacks in this class, but – on the outside looking in, he is portrayed as a overconfident, egotistic, you know, kind of guy. Even though I never really thought that, you know, just, he's just a confident dude. He puts the work in. He's literally been the number one quarterback at every stage of his career. And he's proven it. High school, number one quarterback. Went to college, Heisman winner. You know what I'm saying? Went number one in the NFL draft. You know, so he 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 has been the number one quarterback every step of the way. So, yes, he's gonna struggle a little bit, but he can also be the number one quarterback in the league if if he is what I believe he could be as far as a, a Aaron Rodgers type ceiling, an Aaron Rodgers type player. I don't think he's Patrick Mahomes. I'm not sure if he'll get you three, four, five of them things, but I think he can get you one in his prime. I think he can get you one once he gets acclimated. You know what I'm saying? I think he, he, who knows how much he can get you, but cause I think he is talented. But, you know, you got to put the work in. You got to adjust. You got to take the bumps and the bruises. Flues talked about how attendance was something he was proud of with his veterans. Nate Davis still not there. I know he's a guy that a lot of people get hung up on, Josh, but he's also a guy paid well to contribute, and he didn't do that last year. Where's your concern level with Nate Davis and his participation and how much the Bears can trust him? Yeah, I think I'm kind of concerned with everyone in the offense who wasn't there. I think it's a new offense with a new coordinator and a new scheme and a new quarterback. And unless you have a pretty good excuse, you should probably be there. I know it's voluntary. Keenan Allen had two birthdays to go to. I assume he'll be there next week. Nate Davis was not at OTAs last week, David. You'll remember, we don't know where Darnell Wright was. There was no Valus Jones. So I would expect everyone who wants to be a functioning part of this offense to be there and get with the quarterback and the OC and make sure everything's on the same page. As long as everybody but he realizes that the calendar is still, it's summer. Right? The, the unofficial start of summer begins on Monday. You don't have to be too concerned until they start missing training camp practices, preseason games, and right. then when they're not, if they're on the injury report for week one. Yeah, that's correct. And the same thing with Montez Sweat, right? What did Eric Washington say? He said, he's, I'm in constant communication with him. He's in all the Zoom meetings. Montez seems like a guy who's a hard worker but likes to do it on his own time. And there are guys like that, and that's totally fine. As long as you're healthy and you're busting it come training camp, it's not going to be an issue. We know all about Caleb's impressions. We know all about the defense dominating. But what was your biggest surprise of watching the first OTA? Yeah, I don't know if it was a surprise, but I was really impressed with DeAndre Swift's pass-catching ability. I think we heard a lot about that when they signed him. They wanted a pass-catching weapon as a back, something they haven't had the last two years. And most of Caleb Williams' completions came either on checkdowns or on arrow routes or screens to DeAndre Swift. He has really good hands, so I was impressed with that. I think that that's one of the most overlooked aspects yeah. of this offseason. We focus on the receivers. Obviously, Caleb Williams, but oh, by the way, DeAndre Swift, 
He's explosive. Thousand yard back with good hands, pass catching weapon, good pass protector. It's, it's a big get. Real quick, who's the odd guy out in that backfield? You can't have room for everybody. I think it's probably Khalil Herbert. I think Khalil Herbert's pass protection has been an issue, and we know they really like Roshan Johnson. Josh. Yeah, so, hey, man, Kayla Williams struggling, but that's okay. It's okay. He, he young. He young, dumb, and he a rookie. You know, he, he, he got he got a, it's like I said, this is a whole new, this is the highest level of football you could ever play. Every other level, you can question whether that's the highest level of football. High school, we don't know you played the best players in high school, you know, you know, then college. We don't know, you didn't play all the best players in college, you know what I'm saying? You, you, know, you play who you play, but you ain't played all the best players. So, uh, now we at the highest level of the game, and we're going to see what you got, man. Let me know what y'all think, man. Should we be concerned about Caleb Williams struggling in his first OTAs? I don't think so, but maybe you do. Let me know in the comments below. I'm out.